Well, you know, dodgy game fans, I'll be level with you after the World Cup. Uh, disappointment there. I was a bit disappointed we couldn't get past Wales. And I thought about, you know, calling it quits, especially with Football Manager 2021 now confirmed and looming on the horizon. I thought it's time to wrap up this Cayman Islands new gen nation experiment. But the lure of one more Gold Cup is strong and alluring. Just ask Emerson Skeet. Yes, hello there everybody, welcome back to the channel. Dodgy Gamer here, International Manager of Mystery, managing obscure nations so you don't have to. And we are back for one final crack at the Gold Cup. We are here in Group D, so the tournament's already underway, and today's match is against Curaçao. So, I'm going to quickly run you through the squad. There's a few new faces in here, a couple of promising youngsters coming in late in the game, but we're going to start with the big news. I alluded to this in the intro. Emerson Ski. You'll see, he's here. You might be wondering what all the fuss is about, what I'm going on about. Well, after the World Cup, after that defeat against Wales, the tournament ran its conclusion. We got to the final, and the final was played. I mean, we didn't get to the final, but, you know... We, collectively, the world, got to the final. The tournament was over. The next day, Emerson Skeet dropped a bombshell. His retirement from international football. I nearly quit this save there and then. I tried to talk him round. He was having none of it. We went through nine months of friendlies, and he just wasn't interested in getting called up for the squad at all until it was time to name the Gold Cup squad. I approached him, come on Emerson, one more time, one more tournament. He answered the call, so he's back. This is his first time back in the squad since that game against Wales. He's not actually going to play today though, because of course he got sent off against Wales, didn't he? So he's banned for one competitive game, which is going to be this game. But just looking elsewhere in the team, of course, we've got the experience of Ricardo Ribeiro. And now on 85 caps, we've got Jonah. Challenger Sanchez comes back to the squad. He's missed a couple of squads recently. 91 caps. He's on. We've got Wood Roach. Uh, he's now caught up Skeet. Also on 133 caps for those two. Fantastic stuff. Jamal Rowe. He's just come back from an injury. 54 caps. Carson Solomon offering some experience on 83 caps. Now back in the Cayman Islands. He's um He was released by his club in Europe, returned to the Cayman Islands on 33 international goals. So he's been a big one for us. We've got Jonathan Elliott at 20 years old on 37 caps. I would say one to watch for the long-term future, but of course, I don't think there's a long-term future in this save anymore. And up front, we've got the experience of James Rigg, 111 caps. And in Emerson Skeet's absence, he got on the score sheet enough times to become the first Cayman Islands player to break the 40-goal barrier and has taken Emerson Skeet's spot as the all-time top scorer. So Emerson Skeet has got some catching up to do in this tournament. We've also got some new faces in the squad. We've got here Ramon Reeves, a young right-back, can also play in central defence. So the perfect player to have for a tournament like this, currently at Feyenoord, and you can see here he's been playing in the first team, 29 appearances in the last season. Bit of a shocking average rating, but we don't worry about that. We've also got this guy in Kuma, welcome Fagan, left back who came through at Salzburg and has now moved on to another Austrian team, Lafins, but he looks decent. Also new to the team, Elijah Connolly Ebanks. Just 17 come through at Barcelona. I mean, one for the future. We brought him along for the tournament experience. He's just going to be a backup. But you never know what role he might end up playing. And also yet to be capped, another youngster who's just come through at Salzburg, Thiago Brandon. This is the second time I've called him up, but he's kept dropping out of squads with injuries, so that suggests he may have some injury problems, but I promise him back up to Carson Solomon. Anyway, I'm going to quickly talk you through our friendlies since that disappointment in the World Cup against Wales. We uh, had some prestige friendlies. We took on Uzbekistan and beat them. It was Alfredo Connolly Ebanks, Dave Lindo Wilson, who's unfortunately not available 
for this tournament due to injury. We then had a bit of a disappointing defeat to Australia. Well, it didn't help us that Fernando McLean got himself sent off on 13 minutes. We beat Venezuela 3-2. James Rigg grabbing a brace. That was the game where he broke that scoring record. And then we went to Chile and we got it handed to us pretty convincingly. Quite a poor performance there. But we bounced back towards the end of the year. Um, two goal win over Iran and a 2-2 draw with Japan. Hard fought. We had to come back from 2-0 down. Carson Solomon equalising late on. Into the new year 2035, Bonaire. We did actually have a couple of friendlies arranged here against European teams, but they got cancelled, I guess, due to qualifiers, playoffs or something like that. Anyway, uh, we beat Bonaire 3-0. Pretty straightforward stuff. And St. Kitts and Nevis, we got 6-1 victory over them again quite a straightforward win uh warm-ups for the gold cup narrow defeat to ghana on another day it could have gone our way and then we played chile again much better this time as we got a 1-1 draw and were perhaps unlucky not to take the win as they equalized with only a few minutes to go so here you see our full group for the Gold Cup. We're in there with Curaçao. We've also got Grenada and Canada. Canada are going to become familiar foes for us because the Nations League, we've been drawn with them as well. We've also got Dominican Republic. Now, I think, now we've been here before, of course, because last time out we had Canada and Trinidad and Tobago. That's a group that we should be looking to win and then get through to the knockout rounds. So that's probably what I'm looking at for finishing off this series ahead of Football Manager 2021. I want to play this Gold Cup, then however many matches that turns out to be. Then we're going to do the Nations League. Hopefully then we're going to, for the first time ever, qualify for the Nations League knockout rounds and if we can do that that will be the finale of the series i don't think we're going to go to another world cup because of course with the gold cup being biannual that would mean then another gold cup to do as well and it would just stretch it out a bit too much so here we go opening game we're favorites to win but of course you know we've always got to remember there was that one bad tournament we had where we lost out uh, in a quite a fairly easy group well, we had Mexico, but we had, I think it was, it might have been Curaçao and Granada, I remember, were there as well, and we failed to get out of the group. Anyway, this is how we line up with Skeet sitting this one out. Reeves and Brandon are both carrying Knox, so they're going to have to wait those youngsters to be blooded into the team. Ribeiro, Dave Solomon and Wood Roach partner up in the centre of defence. Challenger Sanchez and welcome Fagan. In the fullback positions, Rowe moves over to Skeet's deep line playmaker role. He's accompanied by another youngster, Glidden Wright, who's had six caps for us, 18 years old. Then we've got Ebanks in the shadow striker position, Carson Solomon and Van Breda Road on the wings, rig up front. Ooh, Curacao looking a bit of an ambitious 4 3 3. We'll see how that plays out. So we're going to tell the team to get out there and impress me that's what they want to do i am quite an experienced manager by this point of course got faith in everybody so they come out we're ready to go cayman islands curacao one last shot at glory in the gold cup can we win it probably not we're probably going to get through the group stage and then hit a wall as soon as we come up against a decent team like the usa or mexico hopefully hopefully no shocks along the way but um we'll see how it goes i mean we got so close once before when we lost on penalties to mexico as rig puts us one nil up beautifully set up by darwin ebanks rig is the man he's a bit of a late bloomer i mean he's not always been the out and out goal scorer but he's been in pretty good goal scoring form over the last couple of years particularly against fellow Concacaf sides look at that just took one hit didn't we even need to control it, just smacked it into the bottom corner. Right then, late in the first half, and it looked like Curaçao were going to launch an attack, but Van Brederode was wise to their moves, runs all the way up the other end, shoots and misses when he probably should have squared it. But here's another chance to extend our lead going into the break, which would be great psychologically for us. Glidden Wright, the youngster, with a shot. It 
doesn't hit the target though looks like we're going to go into the half one nil up and indeed we are curacao haven't really had much of a sniff so we're just going to go with the classic do not get complacent that has stressed out darwin ebanks for some reason get a grip on yourself lads there's a lot more to come from you there we go second half let's get out there let's put this to bed get this beyond doubt an early goal from us would be just perfect well pretty dull second half so far we've got to 70 minutes with no further action gonna make a change Connolly ebanks comes on for glid and right Connolly ebanks can play in that attacker central midfielder role which is perhaps a bit better suited to our normal style of play I want Rig fresh for future games, so Jerome McLean is going to come on. He can play in that advanced forward role as well. Let's see if they can make their mark on the game. We're going to demand a bit more because, you know, we've kind of taken our foot off the gas in this second half. Right, we're up to 90 minutes. No further highlights so far. I'm getting a bit worried because we've been here before, of course, a few Gold Cups ago when, you know, we were sucker punched by late equalisers from teams who hadn't really offered anything against us. Well, we're going to bring on Jonathan Elliott on the left, just to be as an out-and-out -out winger rather than an inside forward like Van Brederode, just to change things up for these final couple of minutes. It would help if I press play, of course, but it looks like we're going to be highlightless right up to the final whistle. And there we go, a 1-0 win. Solid, I suppose. Definitely not spectacular. Right, don't get complacent for the next match. It's stressed out Darwin Ebanks again. But he was alright today. So we'll give him that little pat on the back. So there we go, off to a decent start. I'm not going to do the three quick matches in one episode as I've done in the past. I am going to stretch this out a little bit knowing that, you know, there's not much more to come in terms of New Gen Nation. Next episode will be the conclusion of the group stage, Granada and Canada, and then hopefully we're going to have some knockout round episodes as well. But for now, thank you very much for watching. Please hit that like button if you've enjoyed today's episode. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I'm Dodgy Gamer, International Manager of Mystery. See you again soon.